What is up, guys? It is time for the beginner series guide for the mule deer. We are on Timber Gold Trail, dressed up as a guest member, pretty much, as if you didn't have a membership back in the day is what we call it. I'm using the standard bolt action 243 with the standard scope, and I do have the snake bite bow because this is going to be the first bow you want to buy because it's honestly the best bow in the game mechanically power wise and it's just it's the most affordable bow if my in my opinion if you're going to be spending ems if you're not going to be saving gms but anyways like i said we're on timber gold and i got a something special for the end of the video so make sure you stick around for that you definitely going to want to see it i have had a lot of requests for it and i've just decided to throw it in here in this first ever video for the series so we're going to hunt primarily mule deer because that's the only Pretty much the only ethical thing we can hunt other than the gray wolves and the bighorn with the 243. So I'm going to explain pretty much what the game plan is. I do have camping supplies on me to show you the best tent locations as well. That There's going to be tent locations within this guide too. So, But I like to start here at this lodge primarily until you get these two tents set up. But this is the northeastern lodge right here. I like to fast travel down to this lodge right here, but you're going to notice something is it costs two camping supplies. Now I like to set my tents where it only costs one camping supply. I know you're probably wondering, well, why would you waste two camping supplies to go from the lodge to the tent? And I'll explain to you why I'm not doing that immediately. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to start here at this lodge. We're going to walk down the hill and about right here in this area, about right here, around this intersection, here on the hill, and these, th I like to kind of cut this into three sections here, between this intersection. Anyways, this is where you're going to get your first call at, okay? So instead of wasting camping supplies and just fast traveling, just walk down the hill a little ways, because sometimes you never know what you're going to find. And I'll show that exactly right now, what we're going to be doing. Also, if you guys haven't heard already, and see my latest YouTube short, I do have a referral code link that you guys are able to use for this game. If you guys are starting a new account for any reason why, and, or you're starting off new completely, you can actually get free items in the game. You get 200 free EMs, you get a moose collar, range finder, and some sentinel luminator for free. And that's a tremendous, huge starter for anybody new to this game. It's going to tremendously help them, like, starting off. Like, your primary buy list, in my opinion, and I can almost guarantee anybody else is going to agree with me on this buy your collars first focus on collars okay don't buy tents don't buy clothes buy all the collars you want and primarily going to use okay because that's only going to help you get more money in the end and be able to do missions properly and easy second buy the bow buy the snake bite bow or the recurve Either this or the recurve. You can buy any bow you want, but personally buy the snake bite because mechanically it's the quietest bow in the game. The most powerful bow in the game aside from the crossbows. And to me, it's the most affordable if you are going that, you know, breaking your wallet route to buy gear. But you can all, you can purchase all the gear by just completing missions. It's a little bit more time consuming, but it's completely optional. People say, this, oh, it's a pay to win game. It, it's really not pay to win. It's just more of a patient playing game versus Call of the Wild. It, it to me, it's it's more it's more relaxing than to just r like run and gun and worry about like you know messing up need zones because every time I load in, it's fresh it's fresh map. You don't got to worry about messing up or shooting too much. Fresh animals every time. And with that being said, if you do find like a rare animal or like a non typical buck or something. You do want to make it to your best ability to track that animal down and find it. Because as soon as you log out, it's going to be gone, most likely. <laughs> the odds of you getting another one the next session is slim to none. But, um, yeah, your buy list should primarily be, and I'm going to put this, I'm pretty much going to list them as I name them off. All the collars, buy a bow, and then you can prioritize some good camouflage, and then buy tents. Buy as many tents as you can because it's only going to help you in the long run. I personally, I have like probably six or seven tents only total. I don't go, I haven't went all out and bought a bunch of tents and just leave them on my maps because primarily what I do is, is I'll catch, I'll catch the feeling of wanting to hunt a certain map 
for like a say a straight week or like i'll hunt timber gold for a whole week straight or something or like there's a competition coming up like a community league challenge or something for timber gold i will set my map up accordingly because of those challenges or competitions or something like that okay we got our first call here it is from a uh, rocky mountain elk and it is about where i said it was going to be right, right there so just to show you guys how accurate that is it's about right there but anyways what i was getting at is set your maps up accordingly before you start the competition okay like get your tent set down because every time you load into that map that uses an attempt on the competition so kind of plan ahead and see what maps are going to be you know up for the competitions and get your map set up accordingly and i'm going to put all the coordinates for the tents and stuff in the link or in the description down below so you guys can know the exact location of where I put my tents. You can put yours there too. And I will also list the equipment that I'm using also in the description if you guys are curious of what it's called. And I can actually include the prices of stuff once we like start, you know, carrying on with the series. I'm going to start actually upgrading my own gear to my own tier gear that I use like the recurve, camouflage, stuff like that. And I'll also list the items in there too. So if you're interested in going in and finding them in the shop yourself you're most welcome to do it but once we get over here to the distance where it's only going to cost one camping supply i believe it's going to be right now we're actually going to fast travel to the first tent location and it seems like we have some great wolves in the area which is not always the best sign because they like to spook stuff but anyways here's our first tent and my stand location is pretty much right in front of the tent and to show you the coordinates here in the video I am currently standing at minus 4509, and then my y-axis is 710, exactly, is where I'm standing at. So, and it's pretty much just on this intersection of this road here. Like I said, I like to fast travel to my tents because it pretty much spawns the animals immediately around you instead of having to wait a render distance. I think it's like 150 meters from the lodge before the animals will start to render in. But anyways, we're going to hop up here for a little bit, and I'm going to give out a couple of calls for some mule deer. Alright guys, we've been waiting in the stand for probably about, we'll say 15 minutes, give or take. I've watched a couple Roosevelt, or uh, Rocky Mountain elk and some gray wolves walk by me and stuff, not really paying attention. And I see this guy coming along the riverbed here, and this is actually a really decent mule deer here. We got a 190 to 240 estimate from this guy. This is a very big mule deer here for the starting of this video. Like, and all his tines are properly like length and everything. But the only downside to it is he's got a pretty nasty deduction right there on his like G3. Unfortunately, that's probably going to keep him from hitting that 240 mark. But he's definitely going to be 220. Hopefully, he's going to break at 220. He looks massive. We're going to actually take him with the snake bite here because I'm going to show you just the sheer power of this bow and why you should buy the snake bite. We're going to let him get just a little bit closer here and get out of that tree line so we can get a good view of him. But this is a very, very good buck starting off here. That is a very good estimate. That's just a pretty nasty deduction on him right there, though. It's almost a, its own tine. But all the other tines are really good length, good curve to them. That's what you're wanting to see in a mainframe mule deer like that. Okay, he's pretty much underneath the stand. He's going to stop here in a second, and we're going to put an arrow in him. He should give us a good shot right here just like that instantly down guys it's a very powerful bow and it i hear something else walking up here on me too is this another mule deer walking up on me behind the stand oh it is another buck behind me i didn't even know this guy was behind me here see just to show you that buck didn't spook from that shot he just gave us an audio call, which obviously we can see him right here. But already, we've not even been in the stand 15 minutes, and we've got a 200-plus mule deer buck on the ground right here. And this one's got a pretty decent estimate, too. I think it was like 110 to 190. I couldn't really see it very well because it went away pretty quick. But 
what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take him with the 243 because after we take him, we're going to walk down this road here because it's not fast travel time yet. We're going to walk down the road because this is pretty much my path. I'll start here. I'll start here and I'll walk down this road towards my other tent because this intersection here is really good. This whole southern side right here is primarily mule deer like this whole portion is going to be mule deer wolves and bears rarely see elk right there but anyways we're going to go ahead and take him with the 243 hopefully he gives me a good shot here just like that he is down didn't go far at all as you can see 243 amazing rifle we're going to go ahead and pick this first one up here and he weighs 99.4. We get a score of 152. Pretty average, pretty average. But this guy here, yeah, and see, when, I, when if you're new to the game and don't know nothing about, like, the scoring aspect of it, but when I say deduction, it's basically, see that little, like, that little sticker is what they're called, hanging off the, like, G2 side of his antler? Yeah, that's, that's going to pretty much deduct the score quite a bit, but he should still be over 200. Weighed 98.4, and he exactly 200.35. Like, look at that. That's still an amazing buck. Like, anything over 200 is fantastic. We're going to get and take a trophy shot of this guy here. Really nice trophy shot. All right. We are going to now continue the hunt. We're going to go down the road here a little ways. All right, guys. So we've been sitting in this tree stand for probably 10 minutes and he was down here in the river, but look at this. Like, is this something or is this not something right here? Look at this guy right here. A non-typical mule deer. After having a 200 mule deer on our first stand, like this just goes to show you how good these spots really are for mule deer. Like, look at this guy. He's not a very big non-typical. He's only 85 to 150 estimate, but look at him. Like, these are as rare as it gets almost in this game. We're going to even put an arrow in this guy with the snake bite. It's just like that, guys. He's down. Look at that. That is something. Wow. Like, just absolutely amazing. And it looks like we have some more mule deer coming in from the other side of the river, too. But, oh my gosh, like, that is, that is something. Like, I don't think I've ever had that actually happen to me. Like, a 200 mule deer, actually a potential 240 mule deer, and then the next stand, a non-typical mule deer right there afterwards. Like, that's something just absolutely incredible. But look at this guy. He is so cool looking. He's so wacky. Look at this. He looks like he's got barbed wire on his head. Like, that's amazing. Let me go ahead and pick this guy up. He weighed 115.6 and he scored 152. What an absolute amazing mule deer. Alright guys, if you made it to this part of the video, you're about to get something very special that I've not done in my entire, you know, Hunter Classic career yet. It is a small trophy lodge tour. I've been getting a lot of requests from people wanting to see what I got in it. Now, I've only got two lodges set up. I've got one that's completely full, and I've got the other rustic one that I'm working on right now. But these are my absolute trophies, and I'm going to show it to you guys right now. We're going to start off with the Classy Lodge. Let's go ahead and go in here, and I will showcase everything I got in here. Alright. So, I kind of moved stuff around from this one to my other one but for starters we got my melanistic coyote I shot on loggers point and then I have my 340 albino werewolf and then my personal best turkey which is 69.2 and this one here actually put me on the leaderboards for the year before last's um, Halloween event this is a 385 werewolf, and I believe that is a max score is almost 386. So it put me in first place that year, which I'm pretty excited about that. And then here's my little melanistic bunny I got on Logger's Point. Along with my personal best coyote. And then here's my personal best 
um, red deer I got on Val du Bois. And I actually wasn't, it's a funny story about this guy here. I actually wasn't even trying to hunt these guys. I was doing like a how-to guide for uh, Arctic Fox. And I ended up shooting a 204 doll sheep. That's my personal best there. And then I believe this is my personal best whitetail, like the typical whitetail. Um, I th think he may be my personal best. I don't remember. I know I just texted her meeting him a while back. That's like 2019. But, and then I have my best pheasant here, which is 29.1. Which these guys look so big, like when you have them on the pedestal, than when you actually are hunting them, ironically enough. But we're going to hop over to my other lodge here with my absolute trophies that I cherish a lot real quick. Alrighty, guys. This is pretty much going to be my my prize possessions here. So right here we got my personal best feral hog at 1126 on Bush Ranger Run. And then we have the king of the lodge is what I like to call him. He is my 438 non-typical mule deer. He put me in second on the leaderboard last season for the non-typical mule deer. And I believe he's still holding that current second place spot overall. Because I've only seen only one higher, which is at like 460. Because I've been keeping track of these guys. Because this has been my dream since starting this game is to smash a 400 plus mule deer. And I was so excited. I actually have uh, a video of me shooting him. It was It's a YouTube short. If you guys haven't seen that, I can link it down below in the description if you guys want to go check that out. It's actually my most popular YouTube short right now, which I can see why. Just look at this absolute beast. Like, I was actually, the funny story behind it was I was sitting in my tree stand. Actually, the first tree stand I showcased in this video. And I was just on my phone. I wasn't really recording. I wasn't recording at all at the time. I was just kind of just hanging out, chilling, watching YouTube on my phone. And I look up, and he's walking exactly where that first mule deer is walking. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look at the size of that mule deer. And I didn't even like think how big he actually was until I shot him. And then I seen the score, and I looked on the leaderboards, and it said I was in second on the leaderboard. I was like, holy cow. And then I got my 356 piebald black feral goat from bush rangers and this guy here is my personal best and also g would have been the biggest mule deer shot this would have been a max touring mule deer if that deduction right there didn't count him off this mule deer put me on um put me seventh on the leaderboard last season because of the deduction and then if Without the deduction, I believe it would have put me in first place. Just barely, though. By like, I'm talking like 0 0.1 and a half, too. So, an absolute giant. And then I got my three non typical whitetail deer here. I shot this one while recording a video. Um, I shot this one while recording a video as well. This is my biggest uh, non typical to date, is this 278. And then I got my 251 non-typical up there. And then I, this is my biggest uh, rare whitetail is that 160 piebald sitting up there as well. And this one up here, this mule deer, was my previous biggest before I shot this guy down here, which was 228. And I just decided to keep him because I love these big mainframe guys right here. They look absolutely amazing. And then I got my personal and highest bobcat is 9.1. So I decided to taxidermy him to kind of fill the lodge up a little bit. And yeah, I mean, as you can see, I got a lot of ways to go here. So hopefully we can put some more animals in here. I primarily want to make this lodge kind of like the, the lodge of my deer. You know, like the deer family, elk and deer stuff like that. And, um, yeah. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you found it helpful, let me know down in the comments. Leave a like. That's, you know, the most appreciation from you guys is dropping a simple like is amazing. And, yeah, if you guys want to see more lodge tours, I plan on filling this thing up fairly soon. 
And yeah, hope you guys all have an amazing day. And don't for forget to subscribe if you guys haven't already. Like I said, climbing to that 1,000 mark has been kind of a climb, <laughs> to be honest. But it's been one heck of a ride, and I've enjoyed it tremendously. It is a passion to play this game for as old as it is. But it's good to see that it's still kicking, and hopefully it gets kind of a revival here soon. But it's just been a privilege to do this game for content and stuff and have such an amazing community and stuff backed behind it i've met a lot of nice and cool people and yeah it's just a an amazing experience to be a part of and i just really appreciate it from all you guys who comment on my videos and everything and it's a huge motivation just to keep doing it and yeah